One of the most annoying things I have to deal with after taking a bunch of photos across various devices is having to organize the photos at the end of the day. Take the case where I have a bunch of photos taken on an iPhone and a DSLR. Although these photos are pretty awesome, and some might even say I'm a decent photographer, the problem is that the file names generated on these devices are mostly duplicated. This is because my iPhone and DSLR both use the same naming convention for organizing photos. The problem with having generic file names like these is when I try to combine them in a single directory, the computer will say no because of the duplicated file names. Unlike Apple and Canon, Samsung uses a much more sensible naming scheme for photos. Instead of lazily indexing all the photos in an ascending order, each photo's date and time are used to uniquely identify the photo, thereby preventing duplicated file names. Well, unless you take a bunch of photos within milliseconds of each other, then this naming convention will work pretty well. Since we are in the 21st century, and we have the technology to land rockets on ships and send cars into space, I think we can solve this little problem of mine by writing a few lines of Python code. By the end of this video, we should come up with a little Python script that allows us to scan our directory of photos and rename each photo using the datetime naming convention. This will be done automatically by stripping the datetime metadata from each file. We need two things before we can start writing our Python program. We need to first install the Python interpreter on our local machine. For this, I highly recommend you to install the Anaconda Python distribution as it comes with most of the popular Python libraries like Pandas and NumPy. And because Anaconda Python just sounds cool. The second thing we need is an interactive development environment or an IDE. For this video, I'll be using Microsoft's VS Code Community Edition because that's what all the hardcore developers are using nowadays. All right, let's start a Python project. We can begin by opening up VS Code. Let's bring up the terminal, so press Ctrl and backtick. All right, let's cd into our DSLR directory. We'll be using this directory as the root directory for our code. So let's run an ls to check for the files in this directory. So we can see there are a bunch of JPEGs in this directory. Let's create a blank Python script to store our code. Uh, we can run echo, and then we can give this file a meaningful name. Okay, so let's run ls again. So our blank Python script has been created in the same directory. That's good. Now we can include our Python script in VSC by simply dragging it into the workspace. Let's minimize our terminal and we can start programming. So essentially we want to do three things in our Python program. So first we want to target each image in our root directory. So next, we want to strip the date time metadata from each image. And finally, we want to rename each image using the date time string. We need to import two key modules for our Python program. We'll be needing OS to interact with our operating system. And we also need pathlib to interact with our file system. Let's construct a for loop to target each file in our root directory. We can call pathlib's path class. We can target our root directory, but we need to define this up here. We also need to call this path object's iterator to target each file path in our local directory. Now let's extract the metadata from each of our file path. Let's print the metadata of our file. Let's put the break statement here just to print the data from our first file. Now to run our file, let's bring up our integrated terminal again by control backtick. Before we execute our script, be sure we save it by pressing control and S. We can execute this script by calling our Python interpreter and the name of our script. Now we can see we printed out the metadata extracted from the first file in our loop. We can see a bunch of things. The particular properties we're interested in are these time properties. 
So we can see M time and C time. So M time is the modification time of our file and C time is the creation time of our file. We can also see size here. So this is the size of our file object. So in this case it's given in bytes, so 282 bytes. So this is particularly small for our image. So I'm guessing the first file extracted within our loop is actually our Python script itself because the file size is very small. Let's bring up our local directory. So we can see that the size of our Python script is 282 bytes. Let's look at a JPEG in our directory. So we can see that this JPEG is about five megabytes in size. And the date taken for this JPEG was noted on the 31st of December, 2018. So if we go into the properties of this file, so we can see the creation time for this JPEG was on the 5th of July, 2020 while the modification time was noted on the 31st of December 2018. So the modification time here is actually the date taken for this photo. We have to be a little bit careful here because whenever this file is copied from one directory to another, its creation time gets overwritten. We need to extract the modification time from each file. Um, let's also extract the creation time as well. So what we need to do is to pick the earliest time and use that as our file name. So let's go up here. So let's extract M time and C time from info. So we can simply call info dot and C time. Uh, and then we can go info dot STM time. Let us give C time a name and we'll just call it C time. And also for M time, we can just call it M time. Okay. So in order to pick the earliest time, we need to do a comparison between M time and C time. So luckily our date time is given as a Unix timestamp. These are integer values. We can write an if statement to check the equality of C time and M time. So we can write if M time is less or equal than C time. We can then define the date created as M time. Otherwise, if C time is greater than M time, we can set the date created as C time. Let's minimize our terminal for now. All right, in order to target each image in our directory, we will only be interested in our files with the type JPEG. So we need to ignore our Python script during the search. Essentially, we don't want to rename our Python script during the process. To extract the file extension of the files within our loop, we can use the OS module. We can call its split text method and we can provide it our path. Now we need to destructure its return value into file name and file extension. Okay, so using the file extension, we can check for a particular file type. In this case, we're only interested in all the file types of JPEG. We want to ignore all other file types in our loop, such as type py, which is the Python script. So what we can do is we can construct an if statement to check for the file extension. So if the file extension is not of the type JPEG, we will put a continue statement. So our continue statement would allow us to ignore the rest of the code within this loop if this particular condition is not met. So in this case, we will go to the next iteration of our loop. Let's modify our print statement to print out our file name. And we will also print out the C time and also the M time as well as the date created. Okay, so let's save our file and let's execute our file. Okay, so we printed out our first file because our break statement is still in place. So notice how the first file is an image. So if we comment out our break statement and save it again, and let's rerun our code. And we can see that we have printed out all of our images with their corresponding C time and M time. So we notice that for our first file, we have the creation timestamp of this value, which is higher than its modification timestamp. And appropriately, the date created was chosen as the lower value of the two, which is the modification time. So we can see it's the same for the next one. So the modification value is lower and etc. Okay, so if we go back up to our three steps, 
So now we're able to target each image in our root directory and we can also strip the daytime metadata from each image. All we have left to do is to rename each image using the daytime string that we have extracted from each file. So now we need a method to convert our Unix daytime object into a human readable time string. So to do that, let's open up our good friend Google. So I know it's not going to be a proper coding video without opening up Stack Overflow. So let's follow our tradition. All right, I think this is what we need. So let's go down a bit. So we need to import the daytime module. So this is from the Python standard library. So this is the bit we need, UTC from timestamp. So this is for converting a Unix timestamp into a UTC daytime string. So let's go ahead and copy this bit and we will bring that into our code. Uh, what we're gonna do is to define a function outside of our loop and we can call it Unix to daytime. And we can return this and then we pass in our parameter.ts. Okay, let's give our parameter a more meaningful name. Let's call it Unix. So it takes in the Unix timestamp. Okay, so for the UTC time string, we want to format it in a particular way. Let's modify this a bit. So we want to extract the year, the month, but without these hyphens. So remember the date time string format we are interested in. So it's the year, the month, the day, followed by an underscore. And we have the hour, the minutes, and also the seconds without the columns. We need to also import our date time module. So let's go from date time import date time. Okay, now we need to convert our m time and c time into date time strings. So let's go down to m time. So we can just wrap this around with our function. Okay. And we'll do the same for c time. And let's just save this and we can open up our terminal. Okay, let's execute our script. Okay, cool. So we can see that the date created variable has been converted from a Unix timestamp into a date time string. So that is this variable over here. So the date created. Now what we need to do is to rename each image with the new name. So what we can do is to construct the new file name for our image. So let's create a new variable called say new file name. And that is a combination of our date created variable. Now we also need to include the file extension. So in this case, the file extension is JPEG. So what we are saying here is the new file name is constructed from our new date time string plus the file extension of the existing file. So remember up here we extracted the file extension from the current file within our loop. So to rename the file we need to call the rename method from our OS module. We need to provide it the existing path and the new path which is our new file name. Alright so that should be it. Okay, so before we execute our script, let's slightly modify our print statement. Um, let's get rid of C time and M time. We want to print the original file name. We also want to print the new file name. Um, okay, let's just format this a little bit. And let's just hit Control S to save our file. Okay, I think this should be good. Um, let's bring up our terminal, okay? Let's run an OS to check the files in our current directory. All right, so if we go up a bit, we can see that we still have our Python script in our directory and a bunch of JPEGs. All right, so let's execute our code. Okay, this is pretty cool. So I think our program is working. All right, so our Python script was ignored during the search and we have successfully converted our original file name into a more meaningful one. All right, so let's just double check our directory. So let's run ls again. So we can confirm that all of our images in our directory has been successfully renamed in the daytime format. All right, so hopefully this little Python automation program will help you organize your photos as well. And thanks for watching.